Okay, uh, this evening though, I want to focus on a very important character trait, and the more I have looked at this, the more I'm, I'm convinced if it's a reality in my life, then God is going to be glorified. There's going to be, there's going to be wonder among the lost, and that's not an overstatement. Uh, uh, lost people are going to say, wow, uh, you don't see that very often, and there's going to be glory brought to the Lord. There's going to be a blessing brought to other believers if I have this character principle active in my life. Conversely, if it's not present in my life, not present in your life, time and time again, the Lord will not be honored uh, because of how I act or react, and it will bring problems in my life. The characteristic is carefulness, carefulness. And I want us to look at James chapter 1, just one verse, really pretty brief uh, message. Have you ever heard shorter, more brief uh, preaching in your life than this morning? Well, tonight (laughs) it's going to be a repeat uh, in length. I'm not known for that particularly, but uh, just just how the cards uh, play, I guess, uh, today. The characteristic of carefulness. Now, when I say carefulness, I want to give some disclaimers first. I absolutely am not saying cautiousness. I'm not saying live out your Christian life cautiously. That is, uh, in, with timidity and fear and making sure everything looks just fine before I take a step forward. Because after all, the bridge might be out ahead. Yeah, that's right. The bridge might be out ahead. Be careful, but don't live cautiously because cautiously suggests that one is walking by sight and uh, not willing to step out in faith for fear that something might happen. Uh, It might be why you don't go to the dentist. You don't want to hear any bad news. (laughs) You're going to be hyper-cautious and not go. Of course you go to the dentist. I know that, but um, just by way of illustration. Um, So it's not cautiousness, nor is it walking with a calculating spirit. That is, When I face a situation in life, I have to make sure that it's going to be beneficial to me, and I need to calculate that before I will enter in, okay? Uh, I've never taught a Sunday school class before. I've never led an Awana group, uh, but I'm being asked to. Therefore, what is the upside for me? How am I going to realize some benefit in that? Uh, Or the cautiousness, no, I've never done this before. I might fail, uh, therefore I'm not going to do it. Don't be cautious. Don't be calculating in your Christian life, but do, in fact, be careful. What does that mean? Well, let's look at James 1 and verse 19, if you will. Arguably, uh, one of the most practical boots to the uh, 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 shoe leather to the pavement books in all of Scripture is the book of James. James 1 and verse 19, wherefore, my beloved brethren, Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Um, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were all very much like this. This, They were careful. They were not cautious. The three three Hebrew children, when they uh, they were told that at this particular time, uh, you got to do this, you got to bow, you got to you got to give homage uh, to the altar to the idol. And of course, uh, their answer was, uh, we are going to serve and follow and revere the true and living God. King, you might do what you're going to do. We're not going to be cautious. We're not going to be calculating, but we are going to be careful. That is, we are going to live a life which is proper uh, in the eyes of God and man. And, and uh, maybe this will help. And, and I've, I, read, I read this definition somewhere, or or I developed it somewhere. Somewhere I got this, and I want to share it with you, and it's this. As soon as it will advance, and it's probably me that's not letting it advance. Guys, I'm not advancing. It's not my fault this time. I'm not throwing myself under the bus. Help me out. There we go. Nope. I don't know. Bring bring up that uh, that, uh, definition if you would. Uh, But carefulness has been defined as following the principles of wisdom from the Bible instead of acting and reacting as I want. 
Walking uh, in carefulness is really uh, nothing more or less than walking in biblical wisdom. And so uh, I, I want to look at these, uh, these, this verse, this one verse, um, and kind of break it apart. It, uh, it really reminds me of the song, Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. Oh, be careful little ears what you hear. Oh, be careful little feet where you go. Oh, be careful little mouth what you say, for the Father up above is looking down in love. Don't be cautious. Don't be calculating. But yes, be careful as you walk through life. Now, look at, let's tear apart verse 19. Now, and we're just going just gonna to be in verse 19 uh, uh, primarily other than reading a little bit elsewhere. Uh, but verse 19, the very first part of that has the very important verb phrase that says, wherefore, my b- beloved brethren, let every man be. That is the key. Now, the others are verbs as well. But they follow from this first verb phrase, which is a present imperative, meaning it is a continual command. So believers uh, in the first century, by, from James through the Holy Spirit, they were told, you are to be this, you are to do this. And then he follows with the three uh, ways that is played out. And it speaks, each one of them speaks of being very careful how you conduct your life. First of all, guys, is that gonna, are we going to bring that up? Are we going to be able to? It's, it's dead in the water. It's, no, oh, well, I got a dead in the water. I got this. I've got this. I've got, you know. <laughs> all kinds of things going on up there. <laughs> Point number one, if you're taking notes, listen carefully is what it says. It says, be swift to hear. Now, that's not news to you. We all know this. We understand that. It, uh, it's believing, obeying this command is where really uh, it plays out. Whether or not I will do what verse, not just do one time, but if I will be characterized. That's, that's the nature of a character trait. Am I characterized by being this and doing this? And verse 19, it says, you are commanded to be characterized as those who are swift to hear. It is listening carefully, listening well, and we're to do so quickly. In fact, notice it says in verse 19, I have in my translation, be swift to hear. Do you have any other translation? Quick, quick to hear? It, it, the prefix is tachus, from which we get the word tachycardia, for instance, a rapid heartbeat, for instance. Uh, that's what this word is. Be one who rapidly runs to hear, to listen, to be attentive to what is being communicated to you um, in, in any given context. I tell you, when my, when my kids were young, even preschoolers, uh, we would do listening drills where I would send one of them, maybe the three-year-old or the four-year-old or whoever, whichever one it was, uh, off to another room, and I'd say, okay, uh, uh, and, and we, we made it a game. And we say, let's see who is the best listener uh, of, the, of, of you children, who is growing in listening. Of course, they had different ages, uh, and so you're going to take that into consideration with maturity. But uh, Susie was four years old, and she'd be uh, in another room. i say, Susie, come walking backwards to Daddy, and halfway, do three backward somersaults and one cartwheel, ready, go. And she would be off. Now, you see that being fun for a four-year-old, don't you? But that's discipleship. That is being quick to listen and, uh, and then uh, to obey and follow accordingly, paying strict attention, uh, understanding uh, what was said and what is uh, the need of the hour. Now, I tell you, uh, uh, with God as my witness, I said as recently as last evening, I said, Lord, I am committed in a fresh and a new way um, not only have I been reminded of this command from, from the text, I am committed to, be, to purpose, intentionally be more disciplined at this. I want my listening uh, to take off with a rapid beat. I want to be characterized by that. And folks, I need this. I'm telling you, uh, with, uh, again, with God as my witness being saved 47 years, I've been working on this for 47 years. I'm quick to speak and not always quick to listen. Some of you know that about me, and that's just the, the fact of the matter. Some, uh, some of you are, are just naturally, seemingly, 
very good listeners, and uh, uh, you're, you're not rash. You know, about 40 years ago, I bought a house one time without telling my wife. Now, that is rash. <laughs> You're not, you're, not being, you're not being quick to hear when you do something like that. I'm not proud of it. It's just the, the, fact, uh, the fact of the matter. Actually, I think it's, it's more like 45 years ago. I'll give myself a little bit more uh, uh, of, a, of an immature state when I did that. I'm growing in this area, but I am far, and this is not feigned humility, far from arriving. I was reminded again even today that I was not as quick to hear as what I wish I would have been. Now, it did not cause a train wreck. It wasn't any kind of a disaster. In fact, I don't even think the person perceived that I was not following this, but I knew it. You know how the, the Lord lets you know when you're not following one of his commands? Anybody get to uh, identify with this? And so I'm telling you, with God as my witness, I am wanting and desiring and committed intentionally to be uh, the new and improved. <laughs> Swift to hear. Listen carefully. Amen? That's a command. Uh, We can't get around it. Secondly, you'll notice in your text, speak carefully. Not only swift to hear, but slow to speak. Slow to speak. Um, Once something is said, it can't be taken back. And so if you are listening carefully, then that will allow you and it will help you to, f- to fulfill the second part of that command, to speak very carefully. I've, I've said many times, I'm usually not sorry for what I don't say. When I'm sorry, it's for what, something that I do say, and I haven't done it carefully. Uh, now, how can one speak carefully? By thinking first, uh, by listening, uh, and, the, and the like. Um, So you are to think, you are to process what you're going to say ahead of time. Now, it's interesting. This is the exact opposite prefix as the listen was. The listen was, you're off to the races. Tacky, tachys. This is bradus, like bradycardia. It's a very, very slow heartbeat, extremely slow heartbeat even, That's the word here. Let your speaking, let your response be so slow that you will not have a regret for having said what you said. You truly will own your words because you were that careful in what you were communicating. Practical, isn't it? This is is, uh, God's Word, Christian Living 101. And when people uh, in the workplace and in your family and on and on see you listening intentionally, taking in uh, what is coming your way that was intended for you, chewing on it, processing on it slowly before speaking, my, are you going to wow the crowd? That's not your motive. That's not your intent. But it will be noticeable because you're not blasting. You're not just acting out, and nor would I be when I am following this command. Now, if you'll notice also in uh, this same book, look at, still in chapter 1, look in verse 26, just a few uh, ver- uh, verses down. If any man among you seem to be religious, those of you who, 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 uh, who want to truly have model piety, but you don't bridle your tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. And so that's how much stock is put in what one says. What you say really reveals who you are. It truly uh, reveals either uh, ignorance uh, or indifference or irreverence or, uh, or it reveals that you have truly, in a God-fearing way, sought to respond uh, in a way which is proper and, uh, and God honoring uh, to those who hear it. It says in um, Proverbs 17, 28, even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he that shuts his lips is esteemed as a man of understanding. That is, uh, that one who doesn't just blurt out something, but really carefully analyzes it. That fool is thought wise uh, because 
it is so seldom seen in this world. Proverbs 29, 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words or, or, or rash or unthinking? There is more hope for a fool than of him. And so when this command is violated, uh, when you are not slow to speak, uh, you create difficulties for self. Uh, you hurt others. You wound others. You, uh, you have to go and make it right. Uh, again, I've made headway, uh, but I have again committed in a fresh and anew that I want uh, uh, to really see this more and more. I want to close out my days uh, uh, in this earthly pilgrimage as someone uh, who was known to give intentional attention to uh, whoever is sharing with me and to not act or react in a rash manner, but truly uh, own what I, how I uh, reply to that person. James chapter 3 uh, is absolutely loaded with this. In verse 2 of James 3, if any man offend not in word, he's mature, he's a perfect man. He's able to bridle a whole bottle, a whole body, uh, if he can control your tongue. Verse 5, the tongue is a little member, and it, but it boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindles. kindles. The tongue is a fire, a, a whirl of iniquity. And it goes on to talk about that through uh, the next few verses about how critical it is to listen carefully and speak carefully uh, because what you say matters uh, to the Lord, it matters to other people, uh, and the like. And then thirdly, uh, oh, there's the verses that I just quoted, yeah, from uh, Proverbs 17, 28, uh, and 29, 20. And then thirdly, it says at the end of verse 19 of James 1, to act and or react carefully. Be slow to wrath or to anger. Uh, it's the same prefix again as speak carefully. It's bradus or bradus, meaning uh, very slow, almost to uh, uh, the gears are, 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 are turning very slowly, methodically. Uh, it's not off to the races, not like listening, uh, but in this case, the reacting is also to be very slow. If you, uh, to, uh, to get a, a picture of it, picture road rage. This is the opposite of that. This is the exact polar opposite of that. Well, how is that uh, realized? How is that accomplished? It needs to be part of the character. It needs to be part of the fiber of your being because if we just act and react according to the flesh, it's going to be whatever, uh, whatever uh, sinful impulse comes out, I'm going to act on that. Well, that is exactly the opposite of what the command is. Don't do that. Be characterized by being careful, not cautious, not calculating, but careful in how we act and react with others. So the command here is to be careful when it comes to anger. And everyone can be tempted to be angry when things don't go right. But to turn away from that uh, is something which is only pleasant. Think about this. No one despises a kind person. <laughs> No one, uh, no one is intolerant of a pleasant person. No one wants to avoid uh, someone who is careful and gentle and delicate, if you will, with you in uh, how he or she acts and reacts. The other side, though, is people will hold you at arm's length, will be offended, will be wounded, will be hurt just by an uncautious word, an uncareful word, I should say, um, and, uh, and how, uh, how you act toward them. If you were to read through the book of Proverbs, I don't even know uh, how, how many times, but littered throughout the book of Proverbs is warning about anger, uh, about angry attitudes, about angry responses, um, acting out in that way. It causes problems, it wounds people, it dishonors the Lord, and it doesn't prove to be a blessing in your life either. Uh, I know that when I have that, when I have that temptation, 
I am always convicted, always. I can't get mad at any of you people without God convicting me. I just can't. I, I, I can't get away with it. He won't let me. Uh, I'll sulk. I'll moan. I'll have a pity party, maybe even for a day or two. I'm not, I'm not known for this. But when it does visit me, uh, man, oh, do I know it. I mean, you don't have to tell me. Um, God tells me. And so this single command lived out in these three ways. Listen carefully. Speak carefully. Act and react carefully. When I will do that, it will authenticate my testimony of wanting to honor the Lord in the, in, in the presence of, of the world, in the presence of the church, uh, in the presence of my family. I tell you, uh, uh, take a risk. Ask that one closest to you. Am I known to follow these three, uh, uh, this three-headed uh, uh, blessing of listening very carefully, uh, of speaking very carefully, of acting and reacting very carefully. Now, before you ask that person, make sure you listen to the answer. <laughs> listen carefully. And then formulate your response and own it before it's delivered and act and react in a God-honoring way. Your life will be benefited if you see in the mirror what others are, are seeing. And maybe what you'll see is the personification of kindness and pleasantness and joyfulness and carefulness because you can be used as a, as a tool of the enemy, and I can too, with a knee-jerk reaction when provoked. And so, let's preach to our family and our friends and our co-workers and our, our classmates and our neighbors Let's preach the gospel to them in the content of the gospel and let it be authenticated in careful living. What is a good word from the book of James? May we plug it in. And I'm committed uh, more and more to be this person all my days. Lord, I desire that. So thankful for uh, your word, the uh, instruction, the command that we're given to be very careful in listening to others, not presuming, not answering ahead of time, and to reply with thoughtfulness, carefulness, clarity, not being that fool who is rash, um, and then to act and react however it plays out in a way which is very slow and deliberate and careful because in doing that, Lord, we know that we'll honor you as we are under the control of your Spirit and walking in the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, kindness, meekness, against which there's no law. No one despises someone who is kind. Um, no rational person would. And so, Lord, allow us to live out the gospel as well as communicating it in word, but manifest it in the characteristics of life from this verse. For your glory, for our good, for the blessing of others, Lord Jesus, in your name we do pray. Amen.